Okay. Better. <laughs> Yay! Welcome to that mm -hmm. church! Welcome to that church. We had a, a really good time in worship mm -hmm. this morning. Yeah. We're all sensing His presence. Mm -hmm. he, he's here and ready to, to help us. Right, right. As far as announcements, I don't know that I have any specific announcements, but this weekend, um, uh, Kenneth Copeland Ministries is going to be in Washington, D.C. That'll be a live meeting you can attend or you can watch online on the Victory Channel or YouTube. Uh, if you need help finding it, let us know. But we are going to attend the meeting, so yeah. if you are going to be able to attend the meeting, let us know. We'd love to meet up. And um, just to let you know, something that was said before, um, God had given me you know, this little, little note for all of you all. Uh, about a an anointing service that we're going to have, mm -hmm. and so we're letting you know. So um, as as that comes into as we pray it out, pray it out with us. We'll send you out some information. Those that weren't here, and we'll we'll be letting you know when God sets that up. So we will let you know. Yeah. Okay. And um, brag on God. Does anybody in house want to share a testimony? Okay. Yay! I'll let you come by <laughs> Steve so you can talk through right. his microphone. Right. Okay, just a, a few things. Um, yesterday, um, I just want to thank God, you know, for all his goodness because Amen. he always knows when you're feeling a certain way or if you're tired and you need rest. He, he, stu he um, stops. He or he doesn't stop things. He he orchestrates things, yes. structures things in a certain mm -hmm. way to make it so that you have uh, available time to rest That's and good. rest in yeah. him. Yeah. He makes that available. So I just want to thank him because yesterday he did that for us, Amen. and it was just oh a God, blessing, God, especially God. with this extra hour of sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the other thing, everybody, thank. You. Um, I just want to thank everyone for the prayers for my mom. She's been in um. Um, in a rehab for her knee for two months now, mm -hmm. and um, they just this last week put a um, a different brace on her to make her knee move. Hmm. And That's so good. she may be released this week from cool. yeah, yeah and going yeah. home. So praise God for that. Oh God. Amen. Thankful. And she's thankful for all the prayers too. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I want to brag on God. Um, last Sunday we said that we would be having our trunk or treat on Monday, and so we are redeeming what the devil meant for harm. And we had an amazing outreach here. It was super duper fun. Lots of families came by. So I just want to brag on God for that because he made it happen. Mm -hmm. He brought families. They, they stayed in fellowship. Who does that when you go trick-or-treating, right? Yeah. But God, God redeemed it. It was beautiful. We got to really love on some people and love on one another. We got to fellowship with one another and... Um, God didn't good. say he was going to take us out of the world. Right. Or else we would all we just went to heaven as soon right. as we got born again, right? Yeah. But no, no, we're still going to be working and functioning in this world, mm -hmm. in this world's economy, in this world's ways of doing things, right? But we're supposed to be on a higher level. We're still, still supposed to touch people. How can we touch a world that we completely separate ourselves from? Right, that's right, right. That's so true. those things don't make sense. So hopefully you see here, we have a trunk or treat. We're not glorifying the devil, but we are, we are seeing that it's an opportunity to touch our world yeah. because they're going to be coming to us. They're right. going to be taking their kids around, right? And they were looking, people were looking mm -hmm. for yeah. God, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. They were looking for fellowship. They were looking to, for that which is in each one of you, mm -hmm. right? They were looking to find God. All right. So how does that apply to you? Are you planning a trunk or treat next week? Probably not. So how that applies to you, since you're asking, I know you are, is when God's telling you to do something and you're not sure, you acknowledge him first. You say, God, are, are you telling me to do this? Are you telling me to go here? Number one. Two, okay, I'm going to go. I acknowledge you in going. Mm -hmm. Bless the work of my hand and show me if I'm to go one way or the other. That's what you can glean from this. And use your faith. Make sure you're going where he wants you to go and doing how he wants you to do, right? Go back to John 16, 8. 
John 16. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, here. God's been saying it in our daily. I was just seeing if the daily person, you know, would tell me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we'll go back to. It's worth the wait. It's worth and the wait. Is it 16.8? Yeah, 16.8. Hmm. So go back and look at John 16.8. Okay. And expect. Be expecting. And what does 16.8 say? It, it gets into talking about you working with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> expecting Him to do His work while you go into your world to touch them. It says, wow. and when He comes, the Holy Spirit comes, He will convict and convince the world and bring demonstration to it. Now you can read the rest all around that. Read that whole chapter mm -hmm. around yeah, it and you'll get the better sense of mm -hmm. you working with the Holy Spirit and what you're supposed to be expecting because He is there Amen. to do His work and He needs you to go. All right. Let's stand up and say this <clears> together. <throat> you at home too. Say this with us. <laughs> What when he, he has, has done, done for others, he is doing for me. And greater things than these shall we see. All the glory to our good God. Amen. Amen. And it's offering time. I forgot to say during announcements that we need to remember to vote on Tuesday if you haven't early voted. And if you need any direction on what's coming up, find somebody to pray with. Talk to God about it. Acknowledge Him just like we tell us. Tell, talk about acknowledging him in everything acknowledge him in the boat and, and having wisdom realize that 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 which that ballot that you're going to cast that that which you're going to do with your vote don't get caught up in uh, is it going to be counted right or is it going to be stolen again or, or or what don't get into that realize that you're voting before God. Mm -hmm. It's not before man that you're doing this because it's supposed to be in, in a way secret, but as you're voting, you're casting your vote toward what you want in this nation. Because here, if you go to those party platforms, do you want you know, the ability to, to kill somebody from conception all the way through? I don't know how long are they going to extend it past birth. It, 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 do you want that? No. I mean, is that what we want? No. It doesn't line up with the Word of God, so how can we want that? So you have to make those decisions. But on the other side, you know, you, you have to choose what fits what you see that you should have, right? And that vote is actually a seed that you're sowing. Mm -hmm. You're sowing your... your what you're wanting before God. All right. That's all I'm going to say about that. So, I'm going to hit so many different little things here. God, God was saying to me months ago, probably years ago now, He was saying, time is short. Time is short. You don't know how short it is. But it's a whole lot shorter than from where they started. And if you look at Paul's writings... He sure thought it was going to be happening shortly. <laughs> he, he was, he was gung-ho, is the way I would put it, to do what God was calling him to do. That's, that's why he was pushing. It seemed as he was pushing so hard. So, And some of his writings made it sound like within a year. I can't see this going any more than a year. Maybe five years. Maybe ten years. In, in our lives... God is putting it in my heart. He was putting it in my heart. There is a short amount of time left. You're not going to just address one little thing in a service any longer. You're going to hit so many different topics. And he was telling me basically 10. You're going to hit 10 different topics in, in a service because people need to know and come up in learning and understanding as they hear these things they can hear them over and over so, you know, you're going to hit some things more topics in a row you're you're going to hit things that that are I'm going to be working right with those words of yours and you're going to you're you're going to be and I'm going to be 
touching areas of people's lives to get them in line so they can end up right. That's what he's been saying. The time's short. Okay, so what? Do we have... Do we know that we're going to make it past this afternoon? No. Do we know we're going to be making it past tomorrow? No. Do we know we're going to make it past a month? A year? Five years? Ten years? If, if you look at the numbers, people are numbers people, and I'm, I'm one of those numbers people, but they, they, they were just coming out uh, months ago saying that uh, Billy Brim. Billy Brim's a good person to look up. Uh, Billy Brim were saying with it was all supposed to go off of the date of um, 1947 when Israel became a nation. But they didn't actually become a nation then. They didn't set up their hierarchy statesman type thing until 49. And so doing the 49 and then when Jesus brings up when the end's going to be, he was saying that um, 80 years is a lifespan. He was talking to the Israelites, and he was talking to Israelites, Jesus was, and they understood 70, 80 years was where people were going to make it to. And Jesus said in that lifespan of those people that were born, or that were that were born when that took place, 1947 or 1949. Well, 1947 would have been a couple years ago, right? And my sister's still here. <laughs> but it could be up then to 120 years because Jesus, uh, the, the Word says that we're given 120 years. So somewhere between a couple years ago and what that would be uh that'd be another 40 years 40 years past a couple years ago you're going to still be living this generation will they still be living okay so then they went with the 49 year well 49 puts it as this year 2022 is 80 years from 1949, if those numbers all work out, I don't know, maybe it was 70. Maybe it was 70 years. So 70 years. So are, are we, we're in that window. And he's saying that lifespan, those people are not going to die until I come back. So is it within this 10 years or in this next 40 years? Do you, do you get it? We're there. Are you going to make it any further? We're, if you were at the end, okay, what are we supposed to be doing? Let's done get with it and get to the streets, as Jesus was saying before the service, right? Okay, so that's as far as I'm going to go with that. Realize, okay, there was... When is the catching away of the church? Okay, so he's going to come back in that lifespan. Okay, so they, it did. It went to 49. But there's something about those seven years. If you take away the seven years, that puts us right to today, this year. When, when we see that the new year of... Jerusalem, on their calendar, started just a month ago, or last month. I don't remember what day that was. We said something about it because we had Sunday service the was day. September, it was. Or maybe it was September, Rosh excuse Hashanah me. Or Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, exactly. So. Yes, uh, I think September 27th, something like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. If you see that that was the beginning of that calendar, that was the beginning of that year. It wasn't the beginning of our year as the, the right. however you say it, the Gentile calendar, <laughs> if you want to talk, call it that. 5783, right? Okay, so 5783. So 
there, there is something about that seven years, and he's saying that um, if if we know that the tribulation is seven years long, then four, uh, 39 would be the end of that 80 years, or yeah, 80 years, take seven years off, and we're in 2022. All of those things being said, that's not what I'm, I just want you to be realizing where we're at, and as much as I know, it could happen today. <laughs> Good to hear myself talking. <laughs> so, this is something that uh, we're going to be talking about everything on this page, but should a man that doesn't work eat? That's something the Word addresses. These are just a few of the scriptures that are out there. A whole page of them. If you're, if you're not going to do what you're called to do, that's how it really fits our situation. Other people's situation, I get it. If, if a man won't work, should he eat? The Word says no. Okay, so these are scriptures about that. Why am I bringing that up? If you're not going to do what you're called to do, bless God, get with it, or get off the pot, as they would say in the old days. It's crude, but excuse me, it, it fits <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> so, do you, do you get it? Okay. All right. That's all we're saying about that one. Now we're going into the offering message. <laughs> okay, so... Psalms 115.14. Why are we starting here? We're talking about an offering message. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Why are we talking about this, about an offering message? The Lord's saying, you're going to increase if you do it right. You should look a whole bunch better next year at this time, according to this scripture. You should look a whole bunch better next week at this time than you do this week. If you're working with the Lord, He's, in, he's never looking for you to decrease. He's looking for you to increase. Amen. If you're increasing, why is it you and your children? Because what He teaches you, your children should be learning. What, what you understand from the Word, the children should understand, and they have an example to look at. Okay, we're going to go to the next scripture. Now, I, I had an offering message and then God expanded it, so excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> All right, Jeremiah 6.16. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths. We're, we're to do things the old way. The old way was, it, it, you, I can show you scriptures in the Old Testament about your, your walk is to be by faith, right? So that's the old ways. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest. This, this word rest is very important. It doesn't just mean you know, you're going to, Work real good and rest real good. Uh, you know, we know how to work, right? Okay, it's not this rest. But when you're in faith, you are resting on those promises. You are finding your rest in God and you're trusting. That's that good word that works right there. You're believing. You're, you're in faith with God. You're not anxious. You're not anxious, but you're trusting God. You're, you're in a place of trust. So, man, it, I, I loved it when I went home to my dad's house. And I would get home and you know, I could be just like, oh, this is, he's got it all. I'm in his house. I, he's, he's got this. He, you know, wasn't acting saved, doing things saved, but I was confident. I grew up in his house. He could see to whatever had to happen. You, you know what I'm talking about? That's the way we're supposed to be with our God. Get in His house and be like, 
I'm in the ever everlasting arms or ever loving arms of my Father, yeah. and He's got me. Yeah. That's the rest He's talking about. Okay, so for your souls, but they said, this is this is a key thing. But they said, He's talking about the people of old said this. We will not, we will not walk therein. Ouch. That's like saying to dad, I'm not doing it your way. That's talking to, to people that have children, right? Thus saith the Lord. Go to the next scripture. Oh. Okay, you, you got that idea. So we're going to run here to Matthew 11, and it's got that word rest in it. I don't see it in there. It's there. All right, good, rest. <laughs> Take my yoke upon you. <clears throat> Wait a second. We're talking about yoke? It sounds like work. It sounds like work. <laughs> Take my yoke upon you. They yoked up cattle together so that they had not just two, the effort of what two could do. No, no, no. It was multiplied. Every time you yoked up animals, you didn't just get double. You got anywhere from triple to ten times as much. And that, those are easy facts, right? Okay, so yoke up with Jesus and learn of Jesus. And for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Let's go to the next scripture. We're going to run through these a little bit quicker. The, disciples, the disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect... That word perfect is talking about maturity, not being no. without flaw. You're going to come to doing things more the way he does them. And that's why you're yoked up with him to learn of him. Everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. And you're to be just like Jesus is what that's telling you. Go to the next one. But be ye doers of the word. How do you be a doer? Not hearers only. Deceiving your own selves because people can deceive themselves. Oh, I, I can't do it that faith way. It's too hard. And, and I'm going to just do it the way I know how to. Well, you're deceiving yourself. God's saying doing it my way and you're choosing some other way. For if and... For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his face in a natural glass. Uh, I'm sorry. It's face. A natural, face. It's a natural face in a glass. Go ahead. <laughs> so where, where are we at? Verses 22 and 23. Okay. And this is 25. I'm skipping a, a verse or two there. You can go and read those. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty... Why doesn't it say the law of condemnation? Why doesn't it say the law of rules and regulations? It's a, it's a law that gives you liberty. What do we have here in the United States? This is good. We have liberty to make our own decisions to go our own way. We can choose God's way or our own way. Do you see it? But you have liberty... Because you're, if you're choosing liberty in God, you're choosing that you can do it His way. Do you see it? You, you have a decision, and it gives you a choice. And continue it therein, He being not a forgetful hearer, but forgetting what you look like, forgetting who you're supposed to be like, right? But a doer of, your, of the work, we're back to work again. Do you get it? But being a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. As you do it God's way, you're going to be blessed in what you do. Right. His blessing is upon you to do it his way. Not some other way. Okay, next one. Now, we're going to jump around in the Bible, but we're going to be coming right back there. Is that right? Or are we coming right back to here? We're oh, we're coming back. All right. So, 
you remember how I like to read things backwards. God's taught me to read things backwards. This is what 639 says, and we're going to 636 Eight. or 638. Yeah. And he spake a parable unto them, Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into a ditch? What is he talking about? We're going to see it here in just a second. Because we're going to... We're going to jump around the Bible, but we're going to stay mainly on this idea. If, if you're not yoked up with Jesus, you're yoked up with a blind man, and you're both going to fall into the, the blind man's ditch. All right, now let's look at the scripture right before it. Give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. What are we talking about? Tithing. What are we talking about? Giving. We're talking about an offering. G Jesus was talking about as you give, you're yoked up with Him. You're going to get the blessing, and the blessing is going to work in your right way of doing things. God's right way of doing things. And running over shall men give into your bosom. Where is it coming from? Men. The people here on the earth you're going to have favor with. You're going to have blessing coming from them. So you have to make a decision. Give how much? That's your decision. And it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. So the amount that you give, he's saying is going to be, I'm going to multiply it according to the amount that you choose. All right, let's go That's to the, the next scripture. One. That's the last one. <sighs> the last piece of candy for you. So do you get it? God, I, I missed where I was going. Seems like there's a scripture missing there. So as, as we looked at Luke there, let me just go back there in my, my Bible. So Matthew and Mark Luke. I didn't save all those spots. All right. You get it. Hopefully you got it. it. Made more sense in my head whenever I was going through this. Does it make sense in your heart? Yes. Yes. As you move on and you see that God is is wanting to bless you, but if if you're not doing it his way, can you? Can he? If you're not being yoked up with Jesus to learn of him and do it his way, can he? He wants to, and he's gonna, because I know you're obedient. You, you are good people. I, I'll, I'll tell you, the people in South Carolina are good people. I, I've, I've seen their hearts. Theologies might be messed up. Understanding might be messed up. But the heart, you can't get that just anywhere. Your, your heart going the right direction is what has to first take place, and then you hook up with His ways of doing and being right, being yoked to Him, and then you have happening in your life. All right. Come up and tie a pretty bow on that. Okay. So if you are online and you are giving, you can go to that church stop family. There's instructions there how to give. If you're in-house, there's an envelope in the seat in front of you or back in the kitchen. And um, let, let's stand up and say this together over our giving and believe God for the increase like we were just seeing in the Word. That's Amen. right. That's right. Father over God, all that we've given, you, Father, are, you my are my source. source. Unlimited. Unfailing. Unfailing. Because, because of you, I don't lack, lack for any good, good thing. thing. Thank, Thank you, you for blessing, blessing us and our children and making us a big blessing, blessing to a lot of people, people to, your to your glory. glory. In you. Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for increasing us. Thank you for increasing this giving back to those that give. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And um, you can talk about what we're going to do next yeah. while I get it ready. So... Um, go ahead, you may sit down. Uh, 
grab, grab some more food if you want to, grab something to drink again, and be ready for this next part. Okay? God, God deals with me in different ways. Deals with all of us in different ways, yeah. often, so that we don't get, so that we don't get stuck trying to do it always the same way. So, humbly, I started heading one direction to bring you something today, and this this is what is this called? Overloaded. So this is called overloaded. We're going to go into us. God sees that we're overloaded. Overloaded in what? Overloaded in concern. Overloaded when, phew, man, we, we're getting so much input from so many different ways. Uh, he wants us to get our input from His Word, from His Spirit, right? As, as we see that things aren't always the way they seem, and here we can be concerned and and drawn away and, and, and carried onto a whole bunch of different ideas, I, I was starting to learn about these things so I could bring it forth what, what God was wanting me to learn so I can be of help to anybody, right? So we are, what we're going to do is we're going to listen to Brother Keith, um, my pastor, do you realize I have to have a pastor? Yes. <laughs> We're going to listen to Brother Keith because the way he brought this forth, God saying, don't reinvent the wheel. Just play this. Because I was going to speak on a lot of what he's going to talk about. And I want you to watch how many different topics he gets into. God was pointing that out to me as well. He's going to get into so many different topics that we, we need to come up in understanding. And, and he was saying, I don't know that you'll get to all that. So he's saying, I've already got, got this already prepared. Just play it. We called and asked if we could. And obviously... Okay, so I got a few more minutes to talk. <laughs> so, as as Brother Keith, we asked Brother Keith if we could play this, um, and and he said absolutely. They they got an answer from the Holy Spirit immediately. Yeah, yeah, this is right. So. We want you to listen to this, and you may need to even go back and listen to it again. And so we'll, we'll be sending this out to, to everybody today because we want them, we, we want you all to be on the same page, receiving the same thing from God, getting in a position to receive what God has for you. I think we're going to have to end the broadcast because it'll knock us off. It, it's not proper on his app. That's all right. We'll leave it on because we we asked permission. We got permission, okay. and if it knocks us off, we'll. And it knocks us off. Tell, tell them where they yeah, can get it. Yeah, they'll just. I'll put the link. On we're the, going to send it out to everybody. I'll put the link on the. Okay, on our so Facebook. we will put this link out there on the Facebook page as well as we'll be sending it to the people of this church that have contacted us before, and uh, we we just want you to. We want you to hear what God has to say. R realize when Pastor Steve gets up here and says things, uh, <laughs> it's not always just me talking. Sure enough, I'm mixed in there because I can shut down God and I can, I can let God flow. You've you got to realize that every one of us can do that very thing. But the Spirit, our Spirit, when we are hooked up to the Holy Spirit, can let her flow and let God speak to us. And that's, that's where I want you to hear God speaking to you. Okay? okay. That's enough. <laughs> <For me. laughs> He's on it. He's on it. Which means I can relax. What he was talking about right. is 
I can relax. The night before service, the, the bef service before this, God, by the Holy Spirit, said something. And they were talking about the concerns and things that are happening in this nation. And it, he said, God said, I'm on it. I, I, I'm on this. I'm on this. Stay with me. I'm on this. All right, that's what he's talking about. I think just having it up here. I can rest. Why? He's on it. God's on it. You know, he never he never sleeps. Yes. He never slumbers. He's open 24-7. In Matthew 6, did you turn there? Matthew 6 and uh, 22. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye be single, the whole body, your whole body will be full of light. This has to do with what you look at, where you look, your focus. But if your eye be evil, or that's the word for bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. So depends on what we look at as to whether there's light in us or darkness. You can look at the wrong thing. You can look at the problem. You can look at the lack and you can talk about it and listen to it and meditate on it. And to be carnally minded is death. And the more you talk about how bad it is and how hard it is and how impossible it is and how it can't be fixed, and how we're all going down, the darker it will get. In your mind, in your heart, it'll just get darker. And that's how people get suicidal. It gets so dark to them, they see no way out. They don't want to live anymore. But they're believing lies. I said they're believing lies. God can fix it. Just give him some time. <laughs> give him an opportunity. And actually trust him. Amen. And watch what he can do. And if the light that's in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters. Either he'll hate the one and love the other, or he'll hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And that is money and things, material things personified and that is also a cause of a lot of worry. Amen. Right? How many people are worrying about high prices, inflation, <laughs> the price of gas? Am I going to have a job? What are they doing? <laughs> huh? Is that okay to do that? No. That's the same thing unbelievers are doing. Should we be acting differently from unbelievers? Yes. Thinking differently? Yes. 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 He said, uh, therefore, verse 25, are you there? Yes. Therefore, I say to you, Jesus said, take no thought. Yes. Now, that's that same word that we've been seeing, cares. Be careful for nothing, casting all your cares. The word thought here is that same word. So it's not just that you thought about it. It's that you're worrying about it. Yes. Worrying about it. Uh, some people have said, well, you know, can I not even, not even think about it? I mean, it's something that needs to happen. I need to think about it. I need to plan about it. Yeah, you do. But there's a line you cross where you go beyond thinking about it to worrying. And when you cross that line, you need to repent and get back across the line. If you really want, if you're really going to expect God to do something for you. Yes. How can you tell when you've crossed that line? Anybody want to know? Hold your place in Matthew 6. I wasn't planning on doing this, but it'll, this is worth our time. Hold your place in Matthew 6. We're not done there. And go to 1 John 
the fourth chapter. I'll just read it to you either way. How can I tell when I'm not just thinking about it, I'm actually taking anxious care. I've gone beyond caring about it to taking the care of it. In 1 John 4.18, you'll see this. This is a good uh, identifier, a good mark. 1 John 4.18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out. Did you notice that's some of the same language? He said, casting all your cares. Well, perfect love casts out, throws out fear, because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. You can tell you've gone beyond just thinking about it when it's vexing you, when it's tormenting you. That was worth you coming to church tonight, right? Right there. You can tell you're no longer just thinking about it. You are taking the anxious care of it and you've gone, you've gone now to a place the Lord has commanded you not to go. Amen. And you're not watching your heart and guarding your heart. You're letting, this, you're letting the care of this come on you and sit on you and begin to overload your heart. Amen. Now, all of us have made mistakes in this area. All of us have done some of this. Sometimes ignorantly, sometimes even knew better. But let's make a change. Yes. I said, let's make a change. Yes. And let's determine we're going, to do, we're going to actually do what the Lord told us to do. Yes. And we're going to be careful for nothing. Yes. And we're going to cast all of our anxieties and worries over on Him. And we're going to watch that line where you've gone beyond thinking about it, caring about it, to taking the care of it. And actually, this word... Fear has torment. That word torment is the same word used to describe hell over in Matthew 25, 46. When it talks about everlasting punishment. Which lets you know anxiety, tormenting anxiety and fear and worry is a taste of hell. It's a taste of hell. And anybody that has, you know, yielded to fear and had panic attacks and just, you know, got to where they couldn't eat and sleep and all this stuff, worried their self sick, literally, would agree. You experienced some hell on earth. But here's the thing, you didn't have to. The only reason that can happen to a child of God is being disobedient to his instructions to us. Like I said, we've all made mistakes, but let's learn. Let's grow. Let's stop this. We're not supposed to experience days of hell on earth. The Bible talks about us being able to experience days of heaven on earth. Experience some heaven a little bit of heaven to go to heaven in. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, it, it, it's, it's reality. And, and this would be reason enough to never want to go to hell. The, hell is not just fire and brimstone. One of the big things that makes hell hell is there is no good there. God is not there. Just being with all the people that go there is hell. And there is no peace there. And there is no joy. And there is no life. And there is no light. And the anxiety and the pressure, it's, it's hell. That's the environment of hell. The fear of hell. Unbridled, unrestricted panic 
and fear, oh, we need to tell people they don't want to go there. Is that right? Yeah. People making fun, you know, of, of hell and mocking, you know, are just absolutely being ignorant and stupid. If they could experience hell for 30 seconds and be brought back, when they stopped screaming, they would never joke about it again. There's nothing, nothing funny about it. It is, it is truly terrible, truly awful. And as a child of God, no way should I experience the environment of hell Amen. in my walk down here. Experiencing the torment and vexation of depression and anxiety and fear. God didn't give me a spirit of fear. Oh, somebody say it. Somebody say it. God did not give me a spirit of fear. He gave me the spirit of power and love and a sound mind. I have the joy of the Lord, which is my strength. I have the peace of God, which passes understanding. I don't live in hell on earth. I actually experience days of heaven. I experience some of the atmosphere of heaven in this life. Hallelujah. The presence of God is what makes heaven heaven. His light, his life, being with him, living with God, hanging out with God, that's heaven. Experiencing his goodness, that's, that's heaven. Woo! Woo! I'd have preached this to myself. <laughs> How can you tell when you've gone too far and you're no longer just thinking about it? Torment, vexation, and torment. What is it doing to you? How is it affecting you? That lets you know, I need to stop this right now. I got to repent. And I got to get my mind off of this. And I got to get my mind on the right thing. Got to quit talking about this. Quit looking at this. Can you see this? Yes, sir. And this is entirely in our control. Yes, sir. Don't let anybody tell you. Don't let the devil tell you. You can't help it. That's a lie. Go ahead and, and, and do this. Put your hands on the side of your head. Yeah. Sit out loud. My mind, my mind. is my mind. Is my mind. Nobody. Nobody. Nothing. Nothing can make me think about what I don't want to. God keeps me in perfect peace while my mind is stayed on him. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is, a, this is not something God does for us. This is our responsibility to control what we look at, what we think about, what we listen to, what we talk about. And, and you gotta take some responsibility there. And, and to do so is life changing. Go back to Matthew six, we're not, we're not done with that. Matthew six, here we're continuing to talk about one of the big root causes of worry, which is according to first uh, Peter there, a lack of humility. How can that be? We see answers here in this passage. Matthew 6, 25, the master said, Jesus said, therefore I say to you, take no thought. Now, he's not just talking about thinking about it. The word for thought here is anxious, anxiousness or worry. So it'd be very accurate to say, don't be anxious for your life about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or for your body, what you're going to put on. Has any, any church going people ever worried about <laughs> groceries, huh? Clothing, clothes for the kids, yep. mm? housing, utilities. Can you see what he's talking about? The, the master commanded us not to worry about that. When are we going to take this seriously? Huh? 
He said, isn't the life more than meat? That's the word for food. Isn't your life more than food and your body more than, than clothes? Behold, and he, then he gives us some visuals. He says, look at the birds of the air. They don't plant. They don't harvest. They don't gather. They don't sweat. They don't punch a clock. And yet, they eat. They eat. Billions of birds are eating today all over the planet. And they will never one time in their life worry about where their next meal comes from. Amen. And there was no need for them to worry about it. What's he saying? Well, he talks about this in other places. You're of more value than a bird. Hmm? Yeah. And so if he cares about birds and feeds birds, you're going to eat. Amen. Somebody say it out loud. The birds are going to eat. And I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat. So is there any reason for me to worry about this? I said, well, yeah, you know, with this inflation. I mean, if a, bread, a, a loaf of bread gets $10 a, a loaf, you know, I will eat. If it gets $50 a loaf, I will eat. The birds are going to eat. And I'm going to eat. As long as God's around, Keith's going to eat. Keith's my name. You didn't know. As long as God's around, how about you? I'm going to eat. I'm going to have clothes to wear. Huh? I'm going to have a place to stay. I want you to say it out loud. My God will keep me. All my life long. All the days of my life. I will have everything I need. I will eat. I'll have good clothes to wear. Good place to stay. God will take care of me. All my life. If you really believe that, what effect, should, what effect does it have on you? <sighs> right? <sighs> Rest. Rest. We which have believe do enter into... <sighs> and you know, we're, your pastors and the leadership are responsible for the oversight of this church and this ministry. And Phyllis and I and our staff are responsible for our uh, ministries and our churches and it gets bigger and the numbers get bigger and the bills get bigger and <laughs> huh? But I lose no sleep. Amen. No sleep. Sorry. I've, I've had to, people ask me sometimes, well, man, you know, how much does it take? Don't even ask me that question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do read reports, but I don't dwell on it. I cast the care of it over on the Lord. Right. Is that right? Yeah. Man, what if you miss? What if you miss a month? And what if people stop giving? And, and what if this? And, and what if that? Yeah, and what if God quits being faithful? Amen. Not gonna happen. Amen. I said, not gonna happen. Right. All I gotta do is make sure I listen to him. Amen. That's what I gotta make sure. I gotta make sure I listen to him, do what he tells me to do, yes. not do dumb stuff he didn't tell me to do. That's right. Come on, you're listening. That, that's, that's my job, and the rest of it's not my job. <coughs> hmm? And you want to get rid of this title of you being the provider for your family. Well, I, you mean, I am, I'm, I'm the main provider. Well, then your family is severely limited. <laughs> well, I make good money. Not that good, you don't. Nobody makes that good because the provision is much more than money. You need a lot more than money in this life. No, you are not the provider. Now, you are to do what you need to do. And, and, and it's God's will for us to work. But don't say you are the provider. Because, see, then you're taking, you're taking the responsibility 
And at some point, that's going to bite you. Right? Because you're going to feel like you can't provide, you can't do what needs to happen. Or you, certain things, and like we said, beyond money, you can't provide this kind of help or you can't fix that. You are not the Savior. You are not the healer. You are not the provider. Now, I know people know the correct response to that. And yet, people are taking on responsibilities that are beyond them. And that's where the lack of humility comes in. Can you see this? That's where you get into this other root cause of worry and anxiety. Keep reading and you'll see it even clearer. He said, verse 27, which of you, by taking thought or by being anxious, can add one cubit to his stature? Now we, we need, just because you've heard this before, don't act like you know it. How many believe the Lord is speaking direct from heaven here? Is that right? These are things that will fix your life if you listen to them and get them. The master is asking questions. And when he asks questions, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. He wants you to ask that question. He wants you to answer that question. He said, which one of you, by being anxious and worrying, can add, we might even say, an inch to your stature? What's the answer? What's the answer? Come on, church. Are are y'all awake? What's the answer? Can you do it? Can you worry yourself taller? How about this one? Can you worry yourself thinner? (laughs) Boy, if that worked, there'd be a lot of thin people around. Is there? There would be. (laughs) We'd all be models. I mean. And then, notice the very, next, the very next phrase. And why take thought? Why be anxious for your clothes? Say it out loud. Why worry about it? Why? Why am I worrying about it? You, you got to go. We, we need to answer this question. Why? First of all, he said, which one of you? can change even the smallest thing about yourself by being anxious over it? And the answer is, is no. No, no, nobody. What does that mean? That's beyond you. It's beyond your ability. It's beyond your responsibility. Oh, come on. We're, we're on it. We're on an answer right here. And then the next question is, so then why worry about it? If it's beyond what you can do, and it's even beyond your responsibility, why are you worrying about it? That's being deceived, it's being ignorant, and what's worse, it's being arrogant. Mm. Acting like you can do it. Acting like you have the ability to do it, that you have the responsibility to do it. One of the uh, most painful things in this life is when you know people could be helped. You know they don't have to go through what they're going through. You, you know they could be restored and fixed. And especially people you love, people that you're close to. And they won't listen. And they won't change. And many people worry about that. They lose sleep. They, um, uh, you know, develop ulcers. They... Uh, develop, you know, migraines and all kind of things. Because like we said yesterday, just like the Corvette's not made to pull a cow trailer, your, uh, your body's not made to worry. It will break down. You'll break it down. 
doing that. But people do. Mothers do. Grandmas do. Daddies do. Brothers and sisters do. Pastors do. Pastors. Many times. I, I, I know ministers and I have a lot of minister friends. And, and man, a lot of pastors, they, they, they fought, failed badly in this area. And they would say it's because they care so much about their people. And it just breaks their heart to see. But that's not acknowledging that number one, it's beyond your ability. And number two, it's not your decision. It's their decision. You can't make their decision for them. And so to continue to worry and take the care of it is acting like you can when you can't. It's pride. It's a lack of humility. It's a lack of honesty. And it'll chew you up. Do you want to know how I know about some of these things? Same as you. You've got to learn. I, I had to see early on in ministry that uh, if I let things get on me and stay on me, cares and worries and, and problems, it affected my ministry. It affected when I ministered to people. That I'm not, I don't have the life, I don't have the strength, I don't have the joy that I should have. Because, you know, I was just crying my eyes out 30 minutes before I came to preach. That doesn't work. It doesn't work being a good mother. It doesn't work being a good daddy. Many times people have had a problem with one child. And they let it affect them so much. Stealing their joy, stealing their peace, that it hurts them and diminishes them being a mother or father to their other children. And that's a failure. It's not, and it, it, it's not okay. I said it's not okay. There comes a point where we must acknowledge this is beyond me. I, I hope y'all are listening. This is beyond me. I can't fix this with my faith. I can't fix this by prayer. A lot of people don't want to admit that. Why? Because it's not my choice. It's not my responsibility. It's their choice. Now I can keep praying and asking God to do something, but I've got to turn loose of the care of it. Right? And trust him to deal with them. And me quit dealing with them and quit acting like I can do something I can't. Acknowledge. Are y'all with me? Acknowledge. I'm not the healer. I'm not the provider. I can't fix this. And it's not my responsibility. And in doing so, you can actually get free from the burden of the care. The enemy tried to play me on this particular thing back in the early days. I, we've been in the ministry now over 40 years. And in the early uh, years of the ministry, I had the privilege of being at Brother Kenneth Hagin's ministry in his healing school and his prayer school. And I taught healing on a daily basis in small classes. And uh, uh, I was young and inexperienced, uh, but cared. And, and knew faith worked and knew the anointing made a difference and, and knew, had, had, was completely persuaded of these things. And we had people coming who were pronounced terminal by the medical profession and people that, uh, you know, were given no hope, that kind of thing, and as well as people all stages of it. And we saw some miracles. And we also saw some people die. And over the months and years, I, I began to take the care of the people who didn't receive, not realizing the enemy was playing me because I cared about it and wanted to see everybody get results. 
then these thoughts would come, and I didn't even recognize it was the enemy at first, but, well, if you'd have had more faith, if I'd have had more faith, if you'd have prayed more, if you'd have fasted more, if you'd have done this, if you'd have done that, can you see? I didn't see it then, but can you see? That's a subtle way of thinking, I can fix all this. And man, that's thinking more highly of yourself than you ought. And yet I didn't realize that. And so I started fasting. And I'd tell the guys that was helping us, well, we're going to skip this. And, and, uh, uh, and, and didn't realize I had lost my joy. I'd become so serious. Didn't realize it. And didn't realize it that I wasn't peaceful like I should be. Oh, we got to pray more. Oh, we got to work harder on this. Oh, we got to sacrifice more. We got to do this more. And, and, and I know, I just got looking back now, I got to where I wasn't any fun to be around. And see, I'm thinking I'm being spiritual. And I'm actually being carnal. And failing to trust God like I should. Finally, one day I was doing it for the nth time. This had gone on for, I don't know, months, a year or longer. I don't know. It. And, and, and finally the Lord, in it, trying to pray about this again, he spoke to me. I don't mean I heard an audible voice, but real distinctly in my spirit. If you learn to listen, you can hear him. He said, Keith. I just thought, yes, sir, yes, sir. He said, you are not the healer. I said, okay. I, see, I thought I knew that. If you'd have asked me, right, are you the healer? I'd have said, no, 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 I'm not the healer. And yet, what am I doing? Do you hear what Jesus asked the question? He said, which one of you can make yourself an inch tall by worrying about it being anxious? What's, what's the answer? Nobody. And the very next question is, so why worry about it? Why worry what? About what's beyond you. I said, uh, no, sir, Lord. He said, these people that are coming here, they have a whole life and a whole history you know nothing about before they got here. Some of them are able to make changes and trust me, and some of them didn't make changes 20 years ago and they're not making changes now, and most of that you don't know about. That's beyond you. And whether they're healed or not, whether they live or die, is not resting on your little shoulders. Come on, can you see this? That's too big for me. And yet, I'm trying to carry some of this around. He said, that's not your job. That's not your responsibility. Your job is to receive what I give you, preach it, teach it, minister it with all the faith in your heart, and then cast the care of the rest of it over on me and go enjoy your salvation. Oh, are y'all listening? This, this changed my life. Change, probably saved my marriage too and my health and my sanity my prosperity all these things are connected there's already too much sadness and grief in the world people need to see something else when they're around us when they come to church they need to hear joy they need to see peace they need to see freedom they need to see lightness. The Lord said, come learn about me. My yoke is easy. My burden is not. People talk about how hard it is to serve God. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How heavy a load it is. Hold up. Something's wrong here because the Lord said, light and easy. And I got it. I repented. I said, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. I, that's t you're right. You're right. Of course you're right. And I learned how. And I'm still doing it today. Amen. I do care. And I am touched with the feelings of people's infirmities. And I can even cry and weep with those that weep. Yeah. 
But I know I'm not the Savior. That's good. I know I'm not the healer. Yeah. I know I'm not the deliverer. I'm not the provider. It's not all resting on me, whether people get saved or whether they don't, or whether they get healed or whether they don't. I do what he gives me to do. Yeah. Best I know with all my love, with all my faith. And then I go, okay, Lord, it's yours. Amen. Right? Amen. Huh? Amen. Right? And I go enjoy my salvation. I enjoy my health. I enjoy my family and friends. I enjoy, you know, doing simple things without worrying about the ministry and the people. Now, you gotta, you got to train yourself in this. And if you've been trained in worry for all your life, it's easy to slip back into the worry. But keep doing it. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. By the renewing of your mind. Uh, train, retrain yourself. And catch yourself and say, uh-uh, no, uh-uh. That's beyond me. That's beyond my ability. It's beyond my responsibility. Right. And Lord, I'm casting that care over on you. <clears throat> Is that okay? Amen. Go with me, if you would. Let's, uh, let's look at something else. You, you got a few minutes? Huh? Yep. No? Yes. Are we done? <laughs> uh, go with me to Second Peter. Now, uh, I may touch on a couple of things here in the next few minutes that some people like, some people may not like, but uh, uh, examine the scripture on what we're talking about. Don't, don't just let your mind go off on a tangent. Bring yourself back to the, the scripture. The scripture. We're talking about not being anxious. Not being overloaded with cares. In uh, Second Peter, the third chapter, we're given a glimpse of the future. This is amazing. A lot of times people say, well, we, we have no idea what's going to happen in the future. Not true. Not true. We're given numerous scriptures that tell us specific things that are going to happen ahead of us. And here's one of them. It says, the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, they are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. The, this world was destroyed once long ago by water, by flood. And it's going to, be, going to be destroyed again, and this time completely destroyed by fire. And he describes it, verse 10, uh, verse 10, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Now, the Bible talks about three heavens, the third heaven. And what he's talking about here are the first two. The first heaven is atmosphere around the planet. And the second is what we call space, our solar system, which is a part, as we found out, of a larger galaxy. But it says the heavens are going to pass away with a great noise. How many believe the Bible? Yeah. Yeah. Is this going to happen? Yes. This is going to happen. Yes. And the elements shall melt <coughs> with fervent heat. Now the elements are the soil, the water, the air, the building blocks of the planet. These are going to be completely consumed in not just a campfire, we're talking plasma fire like is on the sun. And we got to remember, God created all of this. He himself is, is a burning fire, a consuming fire. God, your father, is much more powerful than our sun. He created all of the stars. Now, there are people who say, oh, that's just you know, baloney, you know, that's just religious junk. There is no proof 
anywhere that the universe self-generated. Those who know the most about these things, if they're honest, you know what they'll say? We just don't know. The dishonest ones will say something else. But no, if you believe in God and you believe the Bible, you know some things, right? And this is the future. The elements are going to melt. That's a lot of heat. With fervent heat. That's, that's what we just got through saying. A lot of heat. Intense heat. And the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So this planet and its atmosphere and its surrounding space is not going to survive long term. It has been so contaminated by sin and curse that in God's eyes, it is not fixable. He is going to create a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness and no curse. We've never been in a place where there was no curse. You talk about amazing. It's going to be amazing. We get glimpses of it in the book of Isaiah and different places. The lion is going to lie down with the lamb. There will be no carnivores. There will be no meat-eating animals. They won't rip each other apart anymore. And children can play with these beasts and around them and, and over the asps den. And you can run through the jungle barefoot and not get a thorn or a briar, or poison ivy. <laughs> so that's all the curse. We, we're, we're used to it, but this place is messed up. Sin and death has absolutely twisted and perverted and distorted everything down here. And so God's solution is not to fix it, but to do away with it and start over. And we have reason to believe he's done that many times. <laughs> uh, verse 11, seeing then that these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? He says it again. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, we look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Somebody say, I believe the Bible. I believe the word of God. In Revelation 6, now this is not an isolated passage. If we had time, I could probably take you to 12 scriptures that say the same thing. But in Revelation 6 and 12, John is seeing by the Spirit the future. And he said, I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, Revelation 6, 12, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood and the stars of heaven fell to the earth like a fig tree cast her untimely figs, which he's shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled away, rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. This is how the earth will end. And it won't be because we drove too many SUVs <laughs> or flew on airplanes. Now you're laughing, but how many people are worried tonight? 
about climate change. Huh? I mean, really, there are people who are beside themselves and people who are ready to sacrifice half the population of the planet to save the planet. And according to the Bible, the planet is not going to be saved. And the Bible tells us the earth, there will still be an earth existing when this happens. So it didn't get destroyed from climate change. It didn't even get destroyed from a nuclear war or a zombie apocalypse <laughs> or any bizarre thing. Now, now you're laughing, but do you know how many people are worried about this? Yes, yes. And will fight you and get fighting mad? It's because they don't believe the Bible. Many of them don't even believe in God. Right. Why am I talking about this? Because if, if you believe in God and you believe what he has told you, then there's some things I never have to worry about. Amen. Amen. For one thing, it's above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's beyond. That. And, and, and here I want you to see the arrogance. Because what people are saying is we can control the climate. We can fix it. We, and what you're saying, the biggest driver of the climate and environment is the sun. Anything else pales by comparison. And if you're serious about it and you want to know more about it, there are people uh, that don't, you know, that, that are true climatologists that don't agree with the current hysteria. Most of them have been silenced and their funding taken away. But the ones who really know, I was, uh, I was reading after one a while back, Judith somebody, uh, Judith Curry. And boy, you talk about talk about data. She's got data, man. Reams and reams of data. And you know what her learned opinion is after books and books and books? We just don't know. <laughs> I'm quoting her. I'm quoting her. We just we and another one, uh, Joe Bastardi. He was saying we don't understand the climate well enough to be making these broad, sweeping, adamant statements. We don't even know how it works. That's the truth. Yes. Amen. I said, that's the truth. Amen. And all of these dire predictions, and don't misunderstand me, there's pollution, and it's hurting some things, and it's, and it's costing some things, but that's not going to destroy us. Amen. So how do you know? I just read it. <laughs> I just read it. Boop, 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 boop. News bulletin. Just in. I've just been here a long time. <laughs> Go to Revelation 21. Let's talk some more about our future. Why am I talking about this? If you believe these things, you stop worrying. Amen. About the other. Amen. Hmm? You stop. Amen. And you quit believing foolish things like that mankind can correct what the curse is doing to the earth. Much less, we, we see here, something's going to happen to our star, Amen. our sun. And those who study these things, they've predicted these kind of things. Our, our sun, if it goes supernova, there ain't no saving this planet or anything around it. What, whatever happens, and so when it says, it, uh, one place in, in Revelation, it says it, quit sh it would stop shining for a third of the day. Well, what's going on there? And then it looked like red as blood and it got dark. Something catastrophic is happening with our sun, with our star. And then this blast of fire. 
and heat that absolutely rips the, the uh, atmosphere right off the planet and everything around it and melts the elements. But do I, do I need to be concerned about that? No. Do I need to worry about that? Lay awake at night. No. Like I could do anything. <laughs> Come on, y'all see it, is or not? What arrogance, what pride that you among the eight billion on the planet are going to carry the responsibility. We got to fix this sun. We got to. Come on, y'all, y'all work with me. Let's quit driving SUVs and fix the sun. Now, I know some people don't like it, but you can live your life robbed of peace you should have and joy you should have in joy. And you can fight everybody and fuss with everybody and try to prove you're this and you're that. And it's still going to happen exactly the way we just read it. It's going to happen just like that. But there's no reason for us to be concerned about it. God's got a plan. I said, God's got a plan. Somebody say, God's got a plan. He's on it. Revelation 21. Read this with me. Oh, hallelujah. Well, I thought that went pretty well, didn't you? I mean... <laughs> Revelation 21 and 1. Now we are right near the end of the book. 21 and 22 are the last chapters here. How does this thing end? We don't say nobody knows. We do know some things about how it's going to end. We're told. 21.1. John saw it. The Spirit of God let him see it. He said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. On this new one, there's not the oceans like there, were on, there are on this one. That doesn't mean there's no water. But uh, for one thing, how much of our planet's covered with water? Like two-thirds or something. That's a lot of unused real estate. <laughs> right? <laughs> Do we really need that much, that much water? Well, apparently we don't, because in the future, we're not going to have it like that. And verse 23, notice this. And the city had no need of the sun nor of the moon to shine in it. In the new heaven and new earth, we won't even need a star like the sun we have now. Won't even need it. Because the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light. We will actually be living breathing if we're doing that, in his presence. You can still get a suntan, but it's a S-O-N. S-O-N, and you don't need any sunblock. Woo, somebody say glory to God. And he, said, he repeats it in, in Revelation 22, 22, 5. He said, and there was no night there. No night there. And they didn't need a candle. That includes light bulbs. And you don't need the light of the sun. For the Lord God gives them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. Hallelujah. Praise God. And that is how it's going to end. And can I change one thing about the surface of the sun or the cycles of the sun or the nuclear reactions in its core by worrying about it and staying awake 
And how many know you'd be a dummy to be worrying about it and staying awake or imagining that you can fix the interactions of our star with our atmosphere and the, the warming and cooling of the oceans and all of that. We don't even understand it. People who tell you they do are either lying or confused. And if you study it enough, you'll find some of the best of the best who the hysteria folks learned from their books. I had no trouble putting 40 or 50 top climatologists, a list of them, 40 or 50 of them, who absolutely disagree with the current hysteria. But they've been silenced. They've been fired from colleges. Their funding has been pulled. And what they say, you know what they say? We don't know. <laughs> after all their education, after all their study, and that sounds right to me. Does it sound right to you? Yeah. This is just too big. Yeah, we've learned a few little things, but the big stuff we just don't know. And especially what we're talking about now, the sun, our star. What's the solution? Cast all your cares. <laughs> huh? Don't worry. Cast all your cares. Over on him. Amen. All your anxieties. All your fears. Why? I, that's too big for me. It's too big for me. And I trust God. Amen. And if he said, oh, oh, thank you, Lord. I was about to miss something. Go to Psalm 46. Yep. Psalm 46. Thank you, Lord. I was about to leave that out. Psalm 46. You said you had time. Psalm 46, oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. I about preached myself happy about this. What about you? You, you like it? You feel good? Hallelujah. Two things. Two things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not one, two things. Uh, Psalm 46, are you there? It starts off by saying, God is my refuge and my strength. Hallelujah. And he goes on to say, therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed and the mountains are cast into the sea, though the waters roar and are troubled. Listen to the Young's literal translation of this, which is very, very accurate. He said, God is to us a refuge and strength. A help in adversities found most surely. Therefore, we fear not in the changing of the earth. Oh, that's good. Whether it's climate change or any kind of change in the earth, it is written, Psalm 46, 2, we will not fear in the changing of the earth. The slipping of the mountains into the heart of the seas. Though the waters roar in trouble, the mountains shake. Verse 10, he said, be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. Now, now we, we've quoted that sometimes, but can you see he's talking about, you, you could get tempted. If the sun looks like it's going out. And the Bible said when that happens, uh, that the atmosphere is just going to roll up like a curtain or like you rolled up a garment. And, and you can see why the next thing it said, every mountain and every island was moved out of place. What is that? The tectonic plates and everything because of the changes in gravity, everything is just, it's just coming apart. And you'd be tempted to, to be very afraid. But, but the psalmist is saying, if the mountains are sliding off into the sea and the earth is changing, I will not be afraid. Amen. Because God, the one who made the mountains, he made the planet, he made the star, is my papa. My daddy. Is that right? Yes. And he has a plan. He's making me a new earth. 
He's making me a new heaven. I don't have to be afraid. And I will be still and quiet and know that he is God and not be afraid. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, say it out. Say, say this psalm out loud. Say, God is my refuge and my strength. Therefore, I will not be afraid in the changing of the earth. Though the mountains shake, though the seas roar, I will not be afraid. I will not fear. He is with me. I will say, be still, my soul. And know that he is God. I rest in you, my refuge and my strength. And even concerning the, the people that didn't go the right way, and even the people that wound up lost, the Bible tells us after the first resurrection and after the great white throne judgment, God is going to wipe away all tears from our eyes. What does that mean? Well, when we see all the judgments, there'll be some things you wouldn't be happy about. It wasn't the best, but it wasn't God's choice, and it wasn't your choice. It was their choice. And you couldn't change it, and God wouldn't. But even at that, there's coming a point where the father's going to say, okay, that's done. We're going to the next thing. And he will personally wipe away your tears. And after that, you're done. No more sorrow. No more pain. What about all the people of this? You, it's not, you're going to be free from it. What about all the things that happened on the earth? Didn't happen? You're going to be free from it. He, he's going to wipe it away. How many believe if God said he can wipe it away, he can wipe it away. He's going to wipe it away. And there will be no more crying, no more dying, no more sorrow, no more pain. Somebody say hallelujah. Glory to God. A new heaven, new earth. So no matter how rough and rocky it gets down here, why should I lose sleep? Why should I worry? Why should I be anxious? I, I can't change one inch of my height by worrying about it. Why should I do that? I'm acknowledging I don't have to. I refuse to. I trust God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet, everybody. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Come on, begin to just say, I trust you, Lord. I trust you. 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 Hallelujah. 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 The Lord gave, just close your eyes for a few moments. The Lord gave me a song years ago and when I was dealing with some things and man it helped me and I've sung it numerous times since then I'm going to sing it right now we, we can sing it without music and, and as you learn it just pick up the chorus it's also a confession begin to say it I was dealing with some things and I just looked up off my sofa in my in our little apartment that we had way back then and, and I just begin to say this Lord I trust you I trust you I said, Lord, I trust you, I trust you, I trust you, Lord, I do, I never even worry that I might not make it through, because I trust you, I trust you. I trust you, Lord, I do, because you said you love me, I will always trust in you. Sing it with me now. I trust you, I trust you, I trust you, Lord, I do, I never even worry. That I might not make it through because 
I trust you, Lord, I trust you. I trust you, Lord, I do. Because I know you love me, I will always trust in you. Sing it with me now. I trust you, I trust you, I trust you, Lord, I do. I never even worry that I might not make it through because I trust you, Lord, I trust you. I trust you, Lord, I do. Oh, because I know you love me, I will always trust in you. Yes, because I know you love me, I will always trust in you. Hallelujah. Do you trust him, saints? Do you trust him? You heard some stuff today, I think. <laughs> I hear stuff each time I've heard this. I've, I've listened to it probably at least four times, if not more. R realize as, as you get an understanding of something, you'll get more the next time you hear the same thing. Mm -hmm. right. Because the Holy Spirit is the one teaching us. Right. Don't, don't look at Pastor Keith. Don't look at Pastor Steve. Look at your pastor, which is Jesus. He's teaching you. He wants you to get this. Listen to it. I, I'm telling you, listen to it again. All right? That's good. Yeah. We, we need this yeah. mm -hmm. because of what we're coming into. Mm -hmm. We got days ahead of us that, whew, you know, if, if somebody comes with a ball bat and says, are you going to keep confessing Jesus? Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Let, let's see how long you do that. You better be well convinced. I'm not saying you're going to, you have to go through that. But think of, these things are ahead. They're getting darker. But there's more light for you. There's more protection for you. Where are you going to stand? You're going to stand in that protection? You're going to be fretful and have to go through the torment? Jesus didn't go through the torment, but for you. So you wouldn't have to. That's where I want you to, to stay. I want you to keep right there. Realize there's a lot coming. You don't have to go through it. Just everything he said. You don't have to go through any of that worry. You can sleep just like Peter was sleeping. He was going to be beheaded the next day, and he was sound asleep. <laughs> I just got him in and smote him, get him up. And then he still wasn't, he wasn't realizing that this was awake. He just thought it was a dream. Until he got outside and the angel left him and he's like, oh, I'm awake. This is real. This is real. Deliverance is there for you, no matter what. But where you got to stay? You got to be able to sleep through what you you think is going to happen the next day, or or the next hour. Think of John being boiled alive, and nothing happened to him. Where are you resting? Where is your trust at? Where is your faith at? Where is your belief at? Who? Do you see it? You're seeing things that the saints of old wanted to see. And we're getting it here at the end because the Holy Spirit's stepping it up. Did you, did you see how many things he talked about in that service? Mm -hmm. Don't think there was just a message there. There was over a dozen messages there.
God's good. Yeah. Amen. Now, to be able to get this, you have to meditate. What, what did our teachers say in school? You have to reflect upon these things. When you reflect, it's kind of like meditating. You think of, all right, here's this information. What's there to do with me? Where am I here? And, and that's where you make decisions, and that's where your soul is getting saved. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. You settle your emotions down. It's okay. God's got this. Didn't he say he got this? Mm -hmm. And you settle yourself down, and you make a decision. I'm staying with God no matter what. That's right. I'm staying on his side. So I don't have to go through torment. I don't have to go through those years of turbulation. All of these things are connected together. And it's from the beginning of when we started talking today all the way through. This is all for you. Did you see it? You've seen it. You're seeing it. You're seeing it. Oh, hallelujah. Well, thank you for joining us today. We're not done. We're not done. No. Oh, glory to God. We've got more. So today. <laughs> God's got more. Today feels mm. like boot camp. I mean, it feels like we've just had a major entire day of a lot of things that we needed God to do for us. Oh, yes, um, Lord. Cindy, would you bring me a communion cup and then pass them out to everybody there right there by you? And Kelly, would you tell Denise yeah. and Cole they can come out? Um, so, mm. uh, thank you, Steve. So... Communion is, is, it's establishing a covenant, it's, or it's reestablishing a covenant. And the word that, that really most, mean, the, the word that means the most to me when it comes to communion is remember. So the word remember, we're going to remember what we learned today, but even going further back, we're remembering what this communion is about. We're remembering the body of Jesus. And we're remembering the blood of Jesus. And we're remembering what they mean. As we remember what the body of Jesus has done for us, we're able to cast our cares. We're able to not be afraid of all these things that are going on now or going to go on. Go on. And as we remember what the blood of Jesus has done for us, we remember that we don't have to be afraid. So my word for you today in this time of communion is remember. Because when we remember that God's got this, we remember that we don't have to be afraid. So as we take the, the bread that represents Jesus' body, we remember that his body was broken for us so that our body doesn't have to be broken. So I'm going to say some more about the body. Okay. The early church, and here, you'll remember this from Scripture. It says the early church was sickly and dying early. And here, are we not talking about perishing early? Are we not talking about going to heaven? We're, we're talking about the end and, and escaping torment. These are all things that we're talking about. Mm. And this, this body, a lot of people make a lot about the blood. I, I made a lot about the blood mm -hmm. because the blood covenant, the, the new and everlasting covenant. Mm -hmm. I want to say a little more, more about the blood, body. It says that the early church was sick and dying early because they weren't discerning the Lord's body. Mm. That points to what we're missing, right? The Lord's Supper was about his death, not as a resurrection. We, we take the blood all the way to the new and everlasting covenant, mm -hmm. but we take the, the body as what he went through right before, what happened to him right before. Boy, we, we just watched the... The, the passion, of, passion the of the Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. What happened to him right before? His body was broken. 
He was judged. Mm -hmm. We were we were judged because mm -hmm. he did that for me. Yeah, me too. We take that as our own sacrifice. Yeah, as our own scourging. To to see that they whipped him first and then scourged him, which is taking claw like things, slap him, and it was ripping his flesh off, mm -hmm. ripping through his flesh. Mm -hmm. Those stripes is what I want you to look at there. And that flesh received those stripes. That's why we're doing this flesh. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what he did before. That, that is, is where what comes to us because he received those stripes. He received all that that was for what we had coming. Those stripes are to give us healing. Mm -hmm. Amen. 39 of them, 39 different categories of disease yep. and, yeah, and, yeah. and death that can mm -hmm. come to you. Right. You know, we, we have a little knowledge, hindsight, you know, looking back. We, we can mm -hmm. see some things, put things together and say, those stripes, every one of them meant something different for us physically, mentally, any torment, any, anything that we could get into. Wow, let's get into some, some stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're going to receive his body. Mm -hmm. And then why do we get that body? Why, why can we have that? It's because of something we did. We had to repent. That was, and then make confession thereof, of him being our Lord, our Savior. We, we receive that sacrifice as our own sacrifice. As I keep going back to Isaiah 53.10. Look that up. Know that scripture. God God's said it multiple times here. As we discern that blood... It is what gave us the righteousness. Because his body doesn't have any blood in it. He poured it all out for mm. your sake. Wow. Yeah. That blood is on the mercy seat and from the new and everlasting covenant in that blood we have eternal life. Eternal connection with God. Eternal communion. And this is that communion. You see how all that came together? It does. This is good. Mm -hmm. I'll let you confirm. So we can take of his body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Jesus, for your Thank body you, that was broken for us. And we remember your body that was broken for us and all that it brings to us. Thank you for your body. And this blood, it represents, like Pastor Steve said, the blood of Jesus that was poured out for us. That's what was done. And because of that, we can plead the blood. That means the blood pleads our case. The blood of Jesus covers every situation, every the curse that's in this earth. It covers that, and it makes us victorious over that curse. So we don't have to have the curse, but we can have his righteousness we can be seated with him at the right hand of the father because of his blood and when we drink this we remember we remember what he has done for us do you have anything to add with the blood? Mm -hmm. well lord we thank you for the blood yes. and we call ourselves righteous for you called us righteous first right. yeah and we say of you we partake of this covenant in, in this the blood covenant. of Jesus. Yeah. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now we've been all cleaned up and ready to go and do a victorious, wonderful day. Right? That's right. That's Amen. right. So we want you to always remember that God loves, God you, loves you and, and we, we love you. you. And, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Now take your place as you take, take his, his anointing to your world. world.
Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Woo! Are we ready to face yeah. a day?